Mr. Muhammad Eid Khamis Al Muhari. He's a local Emirati scholar who's graduated from the Islamic University in Medina. Currently working in the Islamic Affairs Aukaf Department or as a preacher, as a scholar, and he gives weekly lectures in Dubai in Rashidiyah Grand Masjid. So, Sheikh, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. All praises due to Allah. And may Allah's peace and blessings be upon His final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This nation, our nation, is a blessed nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us over many of the past nations by giving us the final revela revelation, which is the Quran, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. has given us also the final messenger and the Imam and leader of all messengers, the best of creation, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of these blessings that this nation, this revelation, the Quran and Sunnah will be the thing to go back to, the light, the beacon of light that will bring people out of darkness from the time of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ till the end of time. Now let's talk about the time that we're living in. There is good in our time, but there's always bad. That's why we have to be realistic. Our time that we're living in is a challenging time. Misconceptions are spread left and right in social media, in schools, in TV programs, in the street. Our children, not just us, are also bombarded with difficult questions that need answers. And me, myself, I had people come to me, people in their 14s, 15s, asking me questions about Islam. And those questions are very problematic. When you ask them, after you answer, you find out that many of them are hanging to Islam by a thread. This is the reality of this world. But I have also many people in their teens coming to me and saying, Sheikh, I stopped praying a long time ago. Okay? Because why? When you look at because there's ignorance. There is no knowledge. These questions are based on absolute ignorance. No one told them. No one talked to them. No one taught them what they need to do. But there's also good in this nation, in every time. And an example of this good, what we have here in Al Manar Center. Alhamdulillah, when I was told about this program, I didn't realize you know, the details of it. When I sat with the organizers, when they gave me some of the details regarding these programs, I said, SubhanAllah, how come I wasn't aware of this? Wallahi, this is a blessing. And this is an opportunity for us, not just as parents, but as Muslims. And it is an obligation on us to take care of our families. Many of the people here, every single one of us here, is a shepherd. Is a shepherd. Is a ra'i. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has said, "Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun al ra'iyati." Every single one of us here is a shepherd, and he is responsible for his flock, for his family. And that responsibility is not just about providing for them, putting them in the best of schools, giving them the best clothes, best education, worldly education. This is good, but that's not the complete provision that, you'll be so, that you should be supplying your children. The most important responsibility on the parents is to show your children the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, explaining to them what Islam is all about. Letting them know, giving, putting these seeds in so that when they grow up, this seed will grow with them. Faith will increase. And that's what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has commanded us. When he said, Command your children to pray. When? The age of seven. To get them used to it. For his prayer to be part of their lives. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, Use force. 
some force to some extent when they reach 10. Again, to show you the importance, making sure that prayer is part of their lives. Some people would say, well, they just pray, they, do, they just do the actions. It doesn't mean that they have to do five prayers when they're seven. At least make sure that not a day passes except that they pray at least once. At least once so that there is a connection. And after they start praying and see their parents pray, this will be part of their lives. The best thing parents can do for themselves is to invest for the hereafter is to invest in the hereafter. And the biggest investment you can do for yourselves is to invest in your children. You do not understand, many people don't realize the good deeds that will come to you because of your investment in your children. And don't take these things lightly. You might see him, you know, these children now, they're weak, they cannot do anything. This small child one day could be a scholar of Islam. Showing people the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, clearing the misconceptions, reviving the religion for the people, being of great status in this nation because of those efforts that you put in as a parent to take care of them and to guide them in the right direction. And I know one of the parents that had in the first years when his son was studying Quran and learning his religion back in Medina, he said, I put a lot of effort in my children, a lot of my time, a lot of wealth was spent on my children for them to understand their religion. He said, one day, there were some, uh, the brother said, his nephews were with him at home. They're in grade 12, grade 11, and they don't even know how to recite Quran, and they wanted to pray Jama'ah. And his son was grade 3. Someone who, alhamdulillah, recite, understood how to pray, he knows the sunnah, and he has memorized some Quran. So when prayer time came for Maghrib and Isha, of course they didn't pray in the masjid, so they wanted to pray in Jama'ah, these children, they didn't know how to pray. So that young kid said, Baba, let me pray as an Imam. He said, you're, you're young, you can't pray. They said, no Baba, I've studied, I know how to pray. He was shocked, he said, okay fine, pray. He was amazed and when he saw his son leading prayer, reciting Quran, he then realized all the efforts that he put in, all the wealth that he has spent, all these hours of stress that he was in for his child to study, paid off. My son now, who is in grade 3, is leading prayer, alhamdulillah, is reciting proper Quran, is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is a leader in prayer. Those moments, brother, is something you cannot buy with wealth. Wallahi, the happiness that you get, that you have done your job in this world. And in the hereafter, people will come with the day of judgment, with mountains of good deeds. They said, Ya Allah, what deeds have we done to deserve this? They said, Listighfari waladika lak. Your son was doing istighfar for you. Because brothers and sisters, you have to understand, when a person dies, his good deeds stop with his death. Except for a few what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned. And of them he said, Waladun what? Salih. Yad'ula Waladun Salih. Yad'ula a righteous child. That we'll doing for that we'll be doing dua for him. Because the reality of it is that people who die, no one remembers them except their righteous children. Who at night when pray, they raise their hands and say, Ya Allah, forgive my parents. Ya Allah, raise my parents in paradise. Ya Allah, irham my parents. Ya Allah, have mercy on them. And he's doing this. And he's doing this. And he's doing this out of love and out of worship knowing that taking care of his parents is an obligation. So, investing in your children, putting them in these, alhamdulillah, courses to study their religion, this is an investment for you in this dunya. It's an investment for you in the akhirah. In this dunya, alhamdulillah, you'll find him smart. You'll find him energized. You'll find him much smarter than many of the students. Why is that? Because he's preoccupied with good. The blessings of the Quran just opens your head. And I know this of many people. 
who their children, once they start memorizing Quran, they're quick, they're fast. Alhamdulillah, their understanding is much better than the other students. And I have many examples. I lectured in some of the centers for tahfil. And I have two groups. One group is from 7 to 9, and the other group is from 11 to 15. That young group who started young, when I give some matters regarding purification of salah, they're quick to memorize and they're quick to understand. The other group who started late, you can tell the difference. And when they ask me which group do you find better, I say obviously the young ones. They started early. They were fed with faith. They started with the Quran at an early age. Alhamdulillah, it made a difference. And in school, they're smart. They're always the leaders of school and they don't even put much effort because all of the effort is in tahfil. So take care of yourself and understand that this is an investment. And the most important thing, what you're doing in reality is that you are supporting Islam. How does this religion stay on this earth? This religion stays not with the books, not with the messages that we build. It stays with the knowledge that we leave behind. The knowledge that's instilled in the hearts of the generation after us. Think about this. And I remember the day that I was in Medina in my first years. And I remember the question that I asked one of the shiuch. And I told him, I'm studying my religion now, but I don't see myself ever teaching anyone. He said, seek knowledge and good will come. These were his words. He'll say, there will be a time when people will need you. I said, who will ever need me? I'm just, you know, a new knowledge seeker who just started out wanting to know his religion. He said, no, there will come a time where people will come to you wanting to know their religion and you will be the one that guides them. I kept, I didn't listen to his words and I kept 10 years, 12 years, 15 years later, here I am in Dubai giving lectures in masjids. People come to me for counseling, issues taking uh, related to their religion, misconceptions. And subhanAllah, I realized that the shaykh that told me that day that you're going to be starting young, you're going to be taking the knowledge and then people will need you. The same thing that you say to our generation. Those people here that have enrolled in these schools, they are picked by Allah. These are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you to have your children here, then you have to understand that this is also a responsibility upon you. And these are great investments for the hereafter. And the day of judgment, you will ask yourself, you will be asked, what have you done? You will have these children as an investment. They will be put in the scales of good deeds as something that you have done. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the people, the organizers, who are putting all the effort in so that people will benefit, so that it will be easier for the parents, so that it will be easy for the students, and you have to understand that if one, if one, one of the students becomes a scholar, this is a blessing for everyone here, okay? Not just the parents, the blessing for everyone because the scholar will benefit all the people and not just the parents and not just the community. So we all put our hands together. We all try to put our hands and aid our, aid our brothers in doing what is right and supporting each other. As Muslims, it's not important who it is. It's important that we all put our hands and put the effort in to support our religion. And for the next generation, to have scholars in the next generation, not just scholars, people who know the religion at least. People who know the religion. People who when doing mistakes, when doing sins, they know the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the reality of it is, many people don't even know how to go back to Allah. So, Again, this is wallahi, a big responsibility. And these, subhanAllah, is an opportunity for the people. It's not an opportunity only for the people, the organizer. It's an opportunity for the parents. If you want to take, if you want to do something regarding that responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, invest in your children. It might be difficult. You know, we're always motivated when we start. But then, you know, we're faced with challenges. And this is a test for you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... Don't underestimate these kids. Wallahi, they have minds that can take a lot of knowledge in a very small amounts of time. So take care of them, invest, and wallahi, you will be happy on the day of judgment when you see that your child is someone, is a Muslim, and will put in the skills of good deeds for you.
هذا والله اعلم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خير